Namaste. This is Ramdas and we are going to have fun. The um, Maharaji in two days gave me instructions The second day, he, he gave me Ramdas love everybody. And the, the first day, he said, Ramdas, speak truth. speaks truth to other people, speaks truth to oneself. Love everybody. We've, we've been learning to do that for the webcasts. But I don't think we, that first day, I met a person recently She had a story about her, about her, um, her sadhana, and it, 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 it wasn't true. And she was caught in a web of lies to get her to God. And we, we discussed it. We discussed that how truth and God are one. And you can't approach truth with untruth. So, If you're going to undertake sadhana and, and, and you're serious about it, truth to it are, are all, but truth also inside, truth inside.
that's the one, that's the one. We, we concentrate on. I love everything. I've told you that. And I know it's not not easy to do. And somebody comes up and says, I love everything. You can almost tell it from the tone of the voice that they wish they could tell, wish they could love everything. Not that they already have. So just try to tell the truth and love. And then we can get going. The quite there you uh, la, uh, the rest of the program will be your questions about anything you want. And I'll try to give answers. Ramdas, I am 22 years old. All of the people I am friends with are interested in drinking and staying up late and chasing girls. I have had my share of this, and yes, it is fun, but how do I find people who are working on opening their hearts? When I am around my old drinking buddies, I'm not truthful anymore. How do I let go of the old friendships and build new ones with people who are on the same path? This is seeking satsang satsang which is truth goers and it's not easy to get rid of old friends nor is it easy to find satsang First of all, you have to be satsang. That is, you have to be a truthful seeker. That puts out vibrations that, 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 that comes, makes, the, the satsang come to you. First of all, there may be a bulletin board someplace or a, or a storefront that will have a list of <coughs> um, Chanting or uh, chanting or um, meditations or spiritual talks or things like that 
you hang around those places and and you will find somebody at those places or you can call on the internet and say what you want and there will be people like you that are wanting the same thing. For, and there, there will be there, there, there um, are uh, um, website. Our website has a lot of interaction for satsang in there. Okay, next. Thank you. Ramdas, is it at all possible or practical to pursue a spiritual path while going to university and living a normal life in America? Or does one truly have to drop out of society and immerse themselves in a complete holistic environment like living and practicing under a guru in India? The best, the best action you take is to go into a cave and, and nobody will bother you except God. And the cave will be in the Himalayas. But I think most of us are social beings. We have to make a living. And we have to get, go in the marketplace. In the marketplace, there are other people. They are other souls. That is, you are surrounded in college or the marketplace with, with other souls. We have other souls. And you, they might not recognize their soul ship, but you recognize them, and they will be satsang for your for your heart. If you if you want, for example, you can sit down and meditate in a shopping mall. If it is that you don't want anything that the shopping mall has to give, there are plenty of seats on there. And there are plenty of stimulation for, for 
spiritual spiritual thought it'll be for example at university you can meditate before everybody's up say five o'clock when the vibration of the air is not cluttered with information or you could take listen on your your recording device listen to tapes of spiritual spiritual teachings or listening listen to music music for example singing to God you there are hundreds of records of CDs Hare Krishna, Ram, Ram, Ram. All of that will bring you into the into the temple in your in yourself. matters nothing at all what what your environment is you go into your heart and just go with the music Go with the the sound of God's name. I was at graduate school, and Alan Watts. Uh, he had a program Sunday morning on the, lo the local uh, radio station. And I found that my church and it didn't take away from my graduate studies and the graduate studies didn't take away from Alan either
Next question. Good. Next question. You don't have to stop so I can eat, just... Next question. Thank you. Ramdas, after Maharaji dropped his body, you were surprised to find yourself not really grieving. Not there was really no change in your relationship with him. Would you please elaborate on how there was really no change in your relationship with him? I had I had gone back and forth to the West and, and uh, India, Western India, and had practiced him inside me. And When, when he died, I was up at my family farm and um, and uh, in India, when Sebi dies, they said to say he dropped his body, meaning the soul dropped the body away. And I came back from the beach, and my father came out of the door and said, um, you have a message from India. And the, the message reads, Maharaji dropped his boje. Neither of us knew 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 a boje, but thereafter, a call starting to come in that that um, Maharaji had dropped his body. And I invited people up to the farm. There was a sense of mourning. But I 
people were crying all around me. But I couldn't cry because he wasn't there. He was he was there and I didn't I didn't associate his body with his friendship. With our soul friendship. And I try I tried, I said to myself, come on, cry. There's something wrong with you. And then that time on, he has been with me and with me and with me. Now, with me in consciousness, And sometimes I will, I will visualize he and his body. But usually it'll be just a presence, a presence, and then then I climb back, I climb back into my imagination, and we imagine our interaction. People say, I, I, talking to you, dead guru, that's your imagination. Yes. Maharaji exists in my imagination. In fact, he exists all the time in everything. And when he was in his body, I felt um, distant from him when I was in America, because he was in India. But now I just feel He's right here. And he said, anybody thinks upon me, I appear. That goes for you and me. Next question. Thank you. Ramdas, let's go back to the question before that one. 
because I'm not sure that I actually heard the answer. The uh, question was, in being loving awareness, do we need to remain around people who bring out the worst in us through differences, annoyances, etc.? Are we still being loved now if we create some distance from them? I didn't even hear that question before. Um, I guess we were... Hmm? Okay. Um, who did you say would you'd be be uh, around? Well, if, if I'm being loving awareness, do we need to remain around people who bring out the worst in us? And are we still being loved now if we create some distance from them? Create, create some distance, you say. Um, that would be... That would be within the incarnation, out there somewhere. Loving awareness is in soul. And no matter how bad somebody's incarnation is, they're, they're, they are they are a soul. So. Then, so, your ego creates, creates tension or, or distance or things like that. Your soul doesn't do that. Your soul is in an ocean of love. That's the answer, the answer to that question. Thank you. Ramdas, when someone is labeled mentally ill and they cut off communications with everyone, is this a warning sign that they're getting worse? And secondly, do you believe that if I hold loving silence in my heart, and dedicate my activities to that person, that that would make any difference. Well, certainly, 
Um, silence is not worse. <laughs> Some people silence their 